never been born again, then you will never see heaven. Uh, that's what I'll be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be gleaning from this uh, blog article that I have over at the uh, Soul Refuge uh, website, which I encourage you to read, by the way. Uh, you know, go back and see the article if you uh, would like to do that. You'll be able to get the whole article. But I'm going to give you the uh, main uh, gist of that article right now. Uh, you know, many times, ladies and gentlemen, you know, people, when they hear the words born again, they, uh, you know, I can tell... Uh, by talking with people, sometimes they think it's some type of a new movement or something, uh, uh, some type of a movement of Christianity in the past uh, century or so, some maybe 50 years or whatever. But it, that's not true. I, when I uh, speak about being born again, these, these are words that were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So if he said you must be born again, uh, take it as fact, take it as truth then you must be born again. So I remember when I was born again all the way back in 1989. That's when I came to know the real Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been reading this blog uh, or watching YouTube videos, you know I was delivered out of the system of Roman Catholicism, the deception and bondage of that whole system. There's no question in my mind that it is a corrupt and wicked system. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's been deceiving souls for literally centuries. I love the people within the system, but I hate the counterfeit teachings of that system. So we're talking about souls. Uh, and in fact, that's how I came up with the name uh, Soul Refuge, because it's, a, uh, it's pointing people to Jesus Christ, who is the only refuge for our Soul. So that's how I came up with that name, by the way. So let me cut right to the chase, ladies and gentlemen. There is a great necessity for new birth in the life of every living person on planet Earth. Everyone in the world. The word for you today is you must be born again. You must be born again. If you want to go to heaven, ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again. So I, I encourage you uh, to listen carefully, however long I might speak here, probably under 20 minutes, maybe 15 or whatever. You think about this. Now, we're talking about 15 minutes or so of your life. And I, uh, I'm, I'm telling you here today, folks, I know the way to heaven. And not because it's my way, but because it's God's way. And, and if you listen carefully, uh, I, in fact, I encourage you to search out any scriptures that I might give to you uh, today for yourself. I encourage you to do that and, 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 and call upon the Lord as you know uh, best. So that's the word for you. You must be born again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you need to know also that you can attend church for decades and still end up in hell. Now, I, I went to church. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I was an altar boy. I did all of these things. I knew about the person of Jesus Christ, but I did not know Jesus Christ until I was saved, until I was born again of the Spirit. I knew, I understood the gospel. I knew that Jesus Christ paid the price for my sins. There is a revolution that takes place inside the human heart, ladies and gentlemen. That is what the new birth is all about. You're regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit. So as a former Roman Catholic, I attended church for years. And as I said, I did not know the Lord. I went to my Catholic Masses. I prayed my Hail Mary prayers, just like every other good Roman Catholic on my rosary beads. I made my first Holy Commun Communion uh, confirmation. I was as lost as I could be. I would go inside the confessional booth. Usually you'd go, uh, from what I remember, it was on Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. You'd wait online. It'd be uh, one booth on one side of the church. It'd be another booth on the other side. And, and each uh, of those... Uh, separate booths would have two uh, sides to it. So there'd be lines on each side of those booths. You'd wait for everybody else who's uh, in front of you online and they'd be confessing their sins to a man. That's what we did. 
I thank God I was delivered out of that, folks. I know now that I go straight to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who set me free. He's the one who forgave me. Oh, it's a wonderful feeling, by the way, to know that you've been redeemed. It's a wonderful feeling to know that your sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I used to go confess my sins to the local Catholic priest. In fact, I, I find myself making stuff up, lying inside the booth, folks. I was as lost as could be. So, you know, here I was praying before Catholic uh, graven images, statues of Mary and so-called Jesus for many years, having no idea that the second commandment absolutely forbids doing that. If you look at Exodus chapter 20, uh, you'll find the Ten Commandments, specifically if you look at verses 4 through 6, uh, you'll find uh, how the Lord speaks out against graven images. And here I am doing it all the time. So, I was a faithful attendee. Uh, I was no more than some people would use the term uh, an A.M.P. Catholic, <laughs> ashes and palms. You know, I, I like to go for uh, my little ashes on Ash Wednesday. I was hoping the priest would put a uh, a nice big blotch on my forehead so everybody could see that I got my ashes and palms. I used to go get my piece of palm and and cut a little hole in one side and make a little cross out of it. But I was hear me. I was religious but I was as lost as could be. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you this for a reason because I know that there are literally millions of people, folks, that are in the same boat that I was. So, you know, the Bible makes it clear <clears throat> that there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the new birth. When the Lord is speaking about being born again, he's talking about everybody. You must be born again. Let me quote now from John uh, chapter 3, very well-known passage of scripture. Uh, I'll go from 1 to, let's go to 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I said, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus was talking with a Jewish leader, but the man had never been born again of the spirit. Okay? He was born in the flesh, and that is speaking of the natural birth, okay? But he was never born again of the spirit, which is the spiritual birth or the new birth, it's sometimes uh, called. So the words which Jesus spoke that day, ladies and gentlemen, to Nicodemus are still as much alive today as when he first spoke them, okay? It does not matter where you live in the world, does not matter what language you speak, does not matter what color your skin is. The word for you today is this, you must be born again. So if you have already been born again of the Spirit, then you know that what I'm telling you is true. Every one of your relatives and co-workers must also be born again of the Spirit or they will never enter heaven. Now, you're probably not used to hearing this type of thing. If you're living in this world, folks, what you're hearing is we all get to heaven. You know, all roads will lead us to heaven. It doesn't matter. We'll all end up in the same place. Well, I'm here to tell you today you've been believing a lie. And, and what you're hearing today, if, in fact, if you're listening, you're listening today by divine appointment. <laughs> this is not a coincidence, okay? And you you may have distractions coming your way. Even as I'm speaking right now, there could be somebody trying to pull you away or get you to do something. Hear me now. Don't listen. Listen to this word here. And I encourage you to even listen to it again. So uh, you need to know, folks, when I'm talking about this new birth, being born again. I'm not talking about uh, attending religious services. I'm not talking about turning over a new leaf. I'm talking about uh, being regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 
8 and 9, written by a Jewish man. Uh, by the way, the man who wrote this was, a, uh, was the Apostle Paul. He was a Christian persecutor. He consented to the death of many Christians. He was on his way to hell before he got saved. And what happened to Paul needs to happen to you. Listen to him. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Folks, there is not one person in heaven that can say they got there by anything that they did. Don't ever forget that, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, five. not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. So, so uh, th th this gift, by the way, this is a gift. Salvation is a gift, ladies and gentlemen. And, and those words also were spoken by the Apostle Paul. And you can look in the book of Acts. Read Acts uh, chapter 9 uh, up to 31. In fact, read the whole chapter. And, and you'll read about how this man got saved the, the, through the miracle. The Lord spoke to him right out of heaven, folks. And he was on his way to persecute more Christians when the Lord stopped that man dead in his track. So he wrote this to look at, as I skip down to Romans 5, 8, and 9. But God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Now, look, look let, let me concentrate on the last part there, folks. Uh, whoever you are, you may be, you may be uh, a leader, you may be a president, you may be a, uh, a king, <laughs> This word applies to you too. There's only one way for you to get to heaven. And, and you, you have a sin problem. You know, Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Your sin separates you from God. And there's only one way for you to get right with God, folks. There's only one way that God's going to justify you. And that is by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why it says being now justified by his blood. Listen, we shall be saved, folks. Isn't that a, a great word, saved? Do you know what it means to be saved? I can say I'm saved. I'm saved because of what Christ did for me. What am I saved from? I'm saved from wrath. The wrath of God was abiding upon me, folks. If, if I was never saved, the wrath of God would have uh, still be abiding upon me, folks. And if I would have died in that condition, I would have ended up in hell. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giving it to you straight. So there's one, uh, one kingdom, folks. And I'm saved from wrath through him, through what Christ did. That's why I uh, use that scripture very often. So there's one kingdom of God, ladies and gentlemen. There's one way into that kingdom. It's through Christ. You, you, you're born again into that kingdom. If you've never been born again, you're not in the kingdom of God. That, that is so clear. So I want you to see that. Uh, look, look what the Apostle Paul wrote. Now, now keep in mind that, that this man was Jewish, okay? on his way to hell, lost as could be, but then he got saved. Then he had such a burden for his own people. And it's, look, look at Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. You know, basically what Paul is saying, folks, you, you, you need to come in, you need to get saved, you must come through Christ, okay? So he knew that, and he had a burden for his fellow Jew, no question about it. So uh, and then he goes on in Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart 
in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, listen, but of God. So, so we're talking about the circumcision of the heart. Now, obviously, we're not talking about a physical heart. We're talking about the spiritual heart, folks. And that's what he's talking about. We're talking about regeneration. You must be born again. You must have that change inside your heart. Hear me now before you die. Don't ever forget that. I don't care if you're young or old. You may be 10 years old. Somehow you turn this on and you, you hear this man talking. Say, what's this guy talking about? That applies to you too. You, you must be born again, young or old. You could be 95 years old and you need to be born again. In fact, let me tell you a true story here. You know, Kathy and I were visiting uh, Kathy's dad before he died in... Uh, at a nursing home in Queens, and we met a nice Christian lady. Uh, she was visiting her relative, and we got into a conversation, and um, it wasn't long before the lady asked, uh, my wife said, you know, is your father born again? And she was she was serious. <laughs> she was concerned. And, you know, it, it struck us because, you know, it's, it's so rare to, to hear anybody even concerned about these things. So we were so blessed to hear this lady have that concern. And then she went on to talk about her, her own family uh, with a heavy heart. And, and, and she told us how her husband and her son were still not saved. She knew they were not saved. Now, this is something that you rarely hear people talk about. You know, uh, people, folks, if you've been born again, you know the rest of your family needs to be born again, too. Now, let me tell you a true story. You know, many years before that, in the early 1990s, uh, Kathy's mom was diagnosed with uterine cancer. So she, she went for radiation uh, treatment over at, uh, in fact, it was Sloan Kettering in, in New York City. And not too long after that, you know, her mom began to look very pale and she didn't look good. So, uh, you know, she went up for follow, uh, follow-up treatment and they, they didn't find anything wrong. She was eventually taken to the emergency room at Long Island Jewish Hospital, okay? That's in Queens, the Queens-Nassau County border in New York. And she, she was examined and they had to do emergency surgery r right, right away. Why? Because they found out that the uh, treatment had ruptured the colon and her life was in danger, so we, we went to the hospital, you know, uh, I think her brother uh, was the one who had her brought there. And um, we, we went there, we waited downstairs in the lobby. We were with um, uh, my stepdaughter and, and as the operation was going on, this is like two or three o'clock in the morning and, and, you know, we're waiting and waiting. And um, eventually the doctor who was one of the best in that uh, type of surgery, came downstairs and he, he basically was telling us that it didn't look too good. You know, got to realize at the time, I think Kathy's mom at the time was 75 years old. So, uh, but well, you know, let me say something. We knew that she did not know the Lord. We knew she was not born again. We knew that if she were to die in that condition, she would have died in her sins and she would have ended up in hell. Now, now, I know that's hard for some people to swallow. That's the God honest truth. And many of you have been born again. You know what I'm talking about. Your relatives die without Christ. It's a fact. Magic will not bring them into the kingdom, folks. They must be born again like everyone else. So, you know, uh, after receiving this news, I remember when the doctor uh, came down and spoke to us. And um, the thought occurred to me, I, I just I just thought to myself how difficult it must be for him to even do that because he's, I'm sure he's done it countless times where you got to speak to the family and the news apparently wasn't too good. So uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, you know, uh, we, we walk by faith, but, but but I was like, wow, this is this is not good. But you know what? We prayed. We prayed. And we prayed uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes. We went into a separate room and, and somehow we just sensed that everything was going to be all right. Who could do that but the Holy Ghost, folks? So so here's Kathy's uh, mother, uh, 75 years old. Um, I give God the glory. Uh, she went on to live close to another 15 years. Isn't that awesome? Another 15 years, just under 15 years, God answered the prayer. Didn't look good in the natural, but it looked good in the spiritual. And she went and went to a, a nursing home, and um, eventually, 
uh, she was saved. She 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 went to Christian meetings within within that uh, nursing home. In fact, we did we did a lot of those meetings ourselves. So here and hear me now. Second Corinthians chapter five verses seventeen to twenty. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That's the word for you today. Get reconciled to God, folks, because the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Okay? I will close with this passage here, Romans 10, verses 8 to 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear me now, folks, whoever you are, man, woman. Young, old, don't care what color you are, where you live, what country, or what you do for a living. If you call upon the Lord, you know that you are a sinner. Call upon the Lord and say, Lord, I have mercy upon me. Call upon the Lord and say, Lord, your word says I must be born again. I don't understand it, but I want to be born again. I want to go to heaven. That's how you got to talk, folks. Talk Talk to the Lord like you're talking to a friend. You don't have to put on any fake ears. You don't have to put any these and thous. Just talk to him and say, I want to be saved. Be blunt, folks. Call upon the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy upon my soul, and he will hear you. I leave it right there. Be blessed.